Hi everybody, hope you're doing well. So, I come across a new PinePhone video review titled, The PinePhone is Ready. Well, sort of. Where this guy talks about how the PinePhone is ready, but not, not really ready. So we're going we're gonna to listen to what he has to say, and I'm going to interrupt him and tell you the truth about what he's really saying. Okay, here we go. Steve here with another technology video. Today we're going to be doing something a little different. This is my Pine phone. It's an open hardware free software device running Manjaro GNU slash Linux. And as you can see right here, running kernel 5.15 Manjaro ARM, and it's running KDE Plasma Mobile. Now I've had this device for about six months now. To be honest, I haven't spent much time learning to use this device. I've been goofing off. Okay, so I've had mine for six months too, and I don't know why he hasn't done anything with it, because it was awful and it didn't work. So let, let, let's, let's call a, car, a spade a spade, shall we? That's why it was, it was sitting on a shelf like mine was, because it was useless. It was a flashlight. Off with OpenBSD a bit too much. But being a grown man with responsibilities who hates uh, cell phones and smartphones, I really don't like them. I realized that I need to take this device more seriously because people were getting mad at me that they couldn't get a hold of me. So I purchased this clear shell protective case and put on a glass uh, protective uh, screen. So, because it's really fragile and I don't want to break it, I spent a lot of money on this thing. And uh, I flashed the latest factory build of Manjaro KDE Plasma Mobile. And uh, I was really pleasantly surprised uh, 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 since last time I seriously tried to daily drive this device, the battery life uh, was terrible. Yep. The user interface was very unstable, yep. buggy, and the touchscreen keyboard would barely work. And uh, half the time, when you everything you said there, 100% honest. Even load. I mean, it was just it was just a mess. But uh, it's, they definitely and greatly improved the software stack for the Pine Phone. Um, it's running so much better, so much better. And uh, I so just want to make this video we'll about see. it just to say that the Pine Phone is pretty much ready for, for uh, just basic, you know, cell phone, smartphone use with some caveats. You know, it's not going to be a replacement. It, it, it's good, but, but, but it's, not, it's even not good. It's not good for entertainment on the go. Um, but if you're a person that values privacy and freedom and free and open source software, uh, this is this is pretty good. This is this is gonna it's it's gonna be good enough, honestly. Um, they the user interface and the back. No, it's not it's gonna be good enough. Um, I'll I'll get into that in a few minutes. I just want to let him finish speaking. Very live and the touchscreen keyboard have improved immensely. And you can see here how smoothly it's running. Uh, it comes preloaded with some of these cool apps. It comes preloaded with a Telegram desktop. Um, now the camera on board, the camera is kind of like a camera Awful. that you would expect from a phone from Terrible. 2010. Terrible, unusable so, camera. Uh, you know, the camera isn't that, isn't that amazing. Um, it's, it's, it sucks. I got two web browsers on here. I got Angelfish is the web browser it comes with. It's like a, a, a WebKit GTK kind of web browser. And then uh, you can install Firefox. It's called Config Mobile, uh, or, sorry, Mobile Config Firefox. Uh, that I gotta cut out the board. Optimized. So there was a, you know, when I first got this thing, there was a problem with the modem. It has a Qualcomm modem. The modem would just randomly disconnect from the operating system because the modem and the operating system they kind of run separately from each other. Uh, but they. Holy shit, I, that's news to me. How come I have to, to read this guy's video to know that there's a fix for that? Um, it, it, it would be nice to to hear from the manufacturer. Or somebody that you know they finally solved that because it, it, that's been, that's been a nightmare. The modem disappears all the time, and you have to reboot the phone and fix it. Uh, nice to know, uh, you know. If I hadn't viewed this video, I wouldn't know they fixed it. So, did they fix it for Manjaro? What about Arch? What about Mobian? Do I have to download the latest images? Is it going to be good, or am I going to be wasting my time? I bet I'll be wasting my time. Do I have to go back to Manjaro now, which I had originally? Because it sucked? As this guy said, it sucked? Anyway, what a way to run a company. They've since fixed that problem, so I've had, it, you know, I've had this thing running for 12 oh, They claim they fixed that problem. The proof will be in the pudding. Don't believe anything they say. 15 hours straight and the modem uh, was still connected. You could still get calls and texts. Um, you can't get, uh, you can't, it doesn't support multimedia text so you can only just get regular text but you can now that's very important it does not support multimedia text let me tell you what happens 
when someone sends you a multimedia text it, it, it gums up the phone so it can't receive any more text I use an application called um, modem manager GUI to manually delete the, the entries for those failed texts and, and the, your phone company it, the whole time the phone is on they're going to continually try to send you this text with a picture attachment or text with a video attachment or some other kind of multimedia and your phone can't accept it and if, if you don't clear out that modem then you won't get any text at all they just stop so that happened to me when I first got the phone and then I got that device to show me what was going on and now I now so so this means here's here's what you gotta do every time you, you wanna use this phone daily like this for basic calls well sure but you gotta check that modem manager all the time and delete anything you find in it and eventually you gotta hook up a phone to your account to receive those multimedia texts or, or otherwise you have to tell everyone not to send you them and that's, that's impossible of course because no one's going to remember that or care so at some point it's just like today <clears throat> yesterday I went back to my, my Blackberry torch and immediately multimedia texts from a week ago that I, w uh, that I knew were missing started showing up five or six of them and in between then and now on the pine phone every day multiple times a day I'm deleting them because the phone company keeps trying to send them to the phone and the phone won't take them so be prepared for that that that's gonna be a fun time for you. it's gonna keep you busy and there's more busy stuff coming up next too let's let's listen some more get um, uh, verification codes and uh, yeah this is another thing it just, I mean this thing is just like if you're not touching it instantly it, it just and you're gonna have little notes it shuts here, off all the time. Screen. So you guys are just gonna have to bear with me. Um, so yeah, so this is the uh, the this is desktop Firefox. This is not a uh, this is not an Android app. This thing does not run Android apps. This is running bare metal Linux. Um, the desktop Firefox is fine for regular, just kind of lo uh, low, you know. Uh, I it guess it doesn't fit the screen. Low impact web browsing. Uh, YouTube will run, <clears> but I don't recommend running any videos in horizontal mode. And I don't recommend running any videos full screen. Uh, it will basically, uh, uh, it'll, it'll overload the device. But you can run videos kind of like this. I don't know if I agree with that. Um, I've, I use it to use do YouTube on recently. It seemed pretty good. I, I'm gar with guarded optimism to say. But I never thought about turning the phone sideways to see how that worked. But it, it seemed to work pretty good for me. Also, sometimes you know, I'm gonna copy this. Right? Have it in your work bag. Okay, it's getting interesting. Um, you just need to be able to check messages, and make sure you know like maybe you have somebody, you know, like you have kids or animals or somebody's watching them, and you just need to be able to check your messages. It's good for that. Um, yeah, but uh, if you're just gonna be like like I'm playing with it right now, it's it'll it'll just run out the battery in a couple hours if you're just if you're using a web browser and streaming video and audio. Um, let's see here. Uh, let me play this. <clears throat> on Arch, battery life has improved greatly. It's still oh, not not as good as it could be. Um, just be prepared to uh, plug it in or bring an extra power pack with you if you're a high high traffic user of um, resources. See, here's another thing. Um, Oh, sorry. I got Lewis cussing on my thing. Uh, when it's on battery, this thing likes to, to revert the audio to, like, potato audio to save battery. So I don't... Okay. So I'm back. Uh, so this is NVIDIAS. It's an uh, alternative for into YouTube, and it uh, it's way more lightweight. Uh, it uses way less code. So here we'll run some metal outlaw. There we go. Yeah, like I said, uh, it uh, if it's been disconnected from the power source for any period of time, it reverts the audio over to potato audio. Um, it's kind of an annoying thing that I've been trying to fix, but for some reason it just it's just what it does. I'm not sure what he means by potato audio. But yeah, 
So, uh, you know, like I said, not the best entertainment device, uh, you know, for on the go, for streaming or gaming or anything like that. Um, you know, Firefox is a little memory heavy on the device. It'll, it'll warm it up. Um, if you want something that's going to use a little less uh, memory, a little less CPU, definitely use Angelfish. Um, but yeah, and also it's great for SSHing into servers, except I tried to SSH into oh my Oh boy, I, I and, always uh, do that I with my phone. So I don't know if it's something going on oh with uh, the SSH uh, configuration that, on the phone, really... or if I need to call my friend and be like, hey, what's going on with this? As soon as they say, oh, it's great for SSHing into servers, I immediately discount everything they're telling you because they're 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 Kool Aid drinkers, and and they don't want a phone. They they want a, a a tablet, and that's really what they want this thing to be. Every time they say that, you you know, just forget about everything they just reviewed, because they're they're server. I, I can't get. People oh, I love but, the phone. Uh, I love you know, the phone. Whatever. I, I don't know. I just I can't have. Ever, I tried to plan the perfect video, but it just it just wasn't going to happen today. So we're just we're going to do our best here. <laughs> But uh, yeah, and then it does come with some some neat uh, app apps. Uh, some some you know some uh, things I don't like about it. Hopefully, uh, in order to text somebody, you have to have their number in your phone book. You can't just text a random number. You have to put, you have to enter in a contact, and then you can text the contact. Um, I don't remember that. Maybe I haven't figured changed. out how to access my voicemail on here. I'm uh, not even sure if I can. Voicemail. Uh, using my my service provider. Yeah, there's the thing about voicemail. Let me tell you about voicemail. You're going to love this along with the um, <clears throat> multimedia text messaging. This is going to how you're going to keep busy all day. So the, the phone doesn't alert you to voicemail right away. Usually it happens after you reboot the phone. Luckily, you're going to be doing that a lot because you have to get the, 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 the cell modem to, to, to stop disappearing. That, that's the only way to correct it, assuming he's got a, a patch. Maybe not. But... It's you, you still you still have to you have to you have to dial into your message service and check for messages because you're going to find out that there's one waiting there that you haven't been told about. So just picture this: so you get up in the morning, you pick up your pine phone, you put it in the cradle, you're driving to work. You got no Bluetooth, so you got to use loudspeaker. And uh, I don't know about Manjaro, but Arch, uh, you know, uh, had this echoing problem. That the caller could hear themselves speaking and it was terrible it seems to be improved now pardon me i don't know about all of the distros beware and then okay so so then somebody sends you a multimedia text message well you got to open mode manager gui and you got to delete them and you got to do this constantly because all all the whole time during the day the cell phone company is trying to send them out to you and and, and, it, and it jams up your modem you don't get any text if you don't clear them out and then and then and then you gotta and then you gotta call in your voicemail in between clearing out your text messages and make sure you don't actually have any voicemails because the phone might not tell you. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't until you after you reboot and then it tells you and, and it's usually way too late by then. And people are, are wondering where the, where the fuck are you? Why didn't you call me back? Well, you know, I, I have a stupid Pine phone. Anyway, beware. It's it's a, going to be a busy daily driver for you. Um, also. Uh, if you're gonna get this thing, you know it just it's, it's it'll just make bare bones calls and texts. But just get ready for your your service provider to charge you the same price that they that people with an Android. I'm not sure what he's talking about. I move my SIM card just, back so and forth between multiple phones. Price. The price doesn't change. Uh, this thing, uh, the cheapest thing they had was thirty dollars a month, and I thought that was a little ridiculous just to make phone calls. I mean, it, it, and then they said you had to have data so, because you know I got Wi-Fi at home, but so it has two gigabytes of data. And, uh, uh, and unlimited calls and texts, but I can't even do uh, multimedia texts, and um, you know that's just kind of lame. But uh, very oh, lame. You know, so. But yeah, um, so the most important about it, the most important thing about this thing is that you can replace the battery, you can remove the battery. Uh, it is it is an open hardware design, so uh, the schematics and the diagrams are easily available. Uh, nothing is locked down or proprietary except for the modem. But uh, nothing do is locked down okay. except for the modem. Well, then you can let saying nothing so, is locked you know, down is, is, is a lie. Off, but, you know, the something is locked is down. It's so, and it's, you know, uh, this, is, this is what I like about Pine Phone. They, they talk out of both sides of their mouth. Either it's uh, either it is or it isn't. It can't be both. If, it, if it's not locked down, it's not locked down. If something is locked down, then it's locked down. Stop saying, you know, is it. 
That's what they do. They say one speech and they say, oh, yeah, oh, and by the way, that, that's not true. It's really something else. That's how the pine phone sales pitch works. It's, oh, it's super great and fantastic. Well, well, not really. It's not super great and fantastic after all. Unbelievable. Freedoms. Uh, this is a device that I think Richard Stallman could probably use. I mean, I don't know. He might find something wrong with it, but it's pretty close to his, uh, his idea. <laughs> I, of, I could find lots software. wrong with it. Uh, you know, when you watch his talks about the, whether, the, you know, is this, are you running the software or is the software running you or controlling you? Um, and you can secure this thing and, and make it somewhat glowy resistant. Uh, the Manjaro distro I'm running is not very secure. Uh, as you can see, it just had a four, uh, a four digit pin, you know, uh, and it really doesn't give you an option Ooh, to create. Not very secure. That's that. not a very good testimonial. Um, I just, or I haven't learned how to do it yet. I don't know. Maybe if there is, I, I just don't know about it yet. Like I said, I, I want to learn about this thing. Um, from what I understand, po post market OS, which runs on Alpine, He's going to learn about that thing, and he's going to learn to hate it. And it'll be back on the shelf before you know it. Uh, it's much better for security. Uh, it does support full disk encryption and longer passwords. And this thing also has hard, uh, hardware switches in the back. You have hardware switches for... Let me get into focus. Modem, Wi-Fi, microphone, rear camera, front camera, and headphone. So that could come in, in handy. Let's just say, uh, I don't know, I mean, when, when the end of the world comes and... And uh, they're they're out to get you. You know, you can you can make this a little glowy resistant. Okay, another thing I gotta say about this device is that <clears throat> it loves skin oil. Uh, you it, I don't know why, but just any of the oils off your skin just are just gonna be all over this thing. It is just not oil resistant whatsoever. Um, but that's okay. You know, uh, I, I, I don't know what he's talking about. Mine's not oily. Not, Maybe you need you know, to wash your hands more often. Your, your Android and your iPhones, but it's also not gonna spy on you. Know? How do you know that? Different uh, distros on it. You don't have to run Manjaro. You don't have to run KDE Plasma on it. It can run several distros. Uh, Post Market OS, Al Alpine, Manjaro, Arch Linux, OpenSUSE, or Mobian, which is De uh, Debian, Mobile Debian, and um, Ubuntu. The four major mobile environments for this are uh, KDE Plasma, uh, KDE Plasma Mobile, Bosch, SXMO, which is Simple X Mobile, and Ubuntu, and Ubuntu Touch. Sorry, there's no no OpenBSD or FreeBSD support. Uh, with OpenBSD, the way they are constantly cleansing and re reallocating memory will probably make Boring. it very battery inefficient. But who knows? Things could always change in the future. OpenB okay, so there you have it. A fresh review of a somewhat improved but still malfunctioning Pine Phone. Um, the, the, the nut to crack here is Bluetooth's got to work. Multimedia messaging's got to work. Uh, the modem can't be dropping off as And I mean, my, my Wi Fi modem drops off as well. So, I mean, is, have you guys fixed that? Is anyone going to let, let me know when that happens? Um, where is the customer service when it comes to when these things get fixed? How come I have to find out about it on YouTube? Um, you know, you have my name, you have my email address. Um, you know, Pine64, well, why aren't you firing off a service bulletin saying, you know, upgrade to this, problem solved. Now it's all silent. Anyway, um, so you think about what I said about how a Pine phone is going to work for you and the effort you're going to have to make to keep it functional during the daytime and keep your keep yourself functional, keeping up on voicemails that you don't know exist. And, and and restarting the phone periodically to to get the Wi-Fi modem back and or the the cell the cell modem which they claim they fixed but um, we'll we'll see about that anyway um, don't buy a Pine Phone Pro don't buy a Pine Phone don't buy anything Pine 64 uh, because I, I think they just built junk and you know here here we go again uh, with more more uh, the Pine Phone is ready videos and and it's not ready nowhere near ready. Anyway, uh, join my Pine Phone action plan, all you uh, dissatisfied Pine Phone owners. Uh, I'll put the address in the comments below. And uh, remember what Sparky says, don't buy it. It's, it's, it's just a pain in the butt. Thanks, everyone. Take care.